Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you are new, my name is Erica. I make videos all about handbags, lifestyle, beauty, and decor. I would love to have you as part of this community. Please do me a favor, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and come visit with me twice a week. That being said though guys, let's get into the video. All right, everybody, the time has come. It is the last episode in the Urban Southern series that I've presented for the last several weeks. I presented three new bags to the Urban Southern collection, and I will go over those with you very quickly. The first bag I reviewed was the updated Urban Southern Five Pocket Crossbody. I then did a review on the Half Moon Belt Bag, and lastly, I did the review on the Postal Bag. So I had so much fun reviewing these bags for you, carrying these bags, and sampling these bags. A huge thank you again to Urban Southern for being so gracious and sending me these bags for review. I've loved Urban Southern for a very long time. I've been purchasing from them for a while, so to have this opportunity to present to you guys and to review these bags was seriously such a one of a kind opportunity and I sincerely appreciate it. I also very much appreciate everybody who participated in this giveaway process because today yes we are announcing the giveaway guys and I just got so many cool thought-provoking questions and so for the sake of time I feel like we should just get into those. I will announce the giveaway winner at the very end and again you will be able to pick one of the three of those bags that I presented in the color of your choice and I will leave you my email in the description box down below to go ahead and contact me with your personal information so I can order that bag right off of Urban Southern site and send it to you directly. And that being said though guys I do actually have a discount code for any of you interested in purchasing an Urban Southern product. It is good not only for these three bags, but any any of the bags or items on their site. It is In Pursuit 10. I will leave it on the screen and I will also leave it in the description box down below should you want to purchase something from Urban Southern. I would highly recommend because all of their products are absolutely fantastic and I do not think you will be disappointed. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. So the first question is, I'm looking to buy a backpack for summer. What's your favorite backpack? I have several favorite backpacks and it would just depend on what you're trying to do for the summer. I think if you are toting around children and you have diapers, toys, whatever, and you're going to the zoo or you're going somewhere like that and you want something that just carries everything, the Urban Southern Legacy Tote backpack would be like the best in my opinion for that purpose. Plus it's convertible so you can have a handheld, shoulder bag, crossbody, or backpack. So that in and of itself is just fantastic. It's full grain leather so it's super durable and paired with the fact that it's just like the workhorse tote and it just carries everything, it goes anywhere, it does anything. And for that reason, I would recommend that. The next backpack I would recommend is the Fial Robin Konkin Classic Backpack. That is more for when I go like hiking or I'm biking and I just am not afraid to kind of get the bag dirty, wet, whatever. It is a waterproof material. The material is very easy to clean. You can actually just mix a solution of laundry detergent and warm water and just kind of scrub it off with a wet cloth and it just works perfectly. And again, just the bag is like designed to just take a beating. So I tend to gravitate towards that bag when I'm doing like active summer activities. The next backpack I would recommend is the PLG backpack, the Portland Leather Goods backpack. I think it's a perfect size to carry a lot of your essential, especially for traveling. I actually tend to travel with a DSLR camera. So for something like that, I feel like the PLG tote would be perfect because it would carry that and a, a few other essentials. So that would be great. It's comfortable to wear. It's not super heavy. And I love the fact that it's got the front pocket for in and out ease of use. My last recommendation for a backpack would be the Rebecca Minkoff Mini Julian backpack. I think that is perfect for like going out. So I think it's great for the wineries, uh, for a fair or even like from day to day. I think it's large enough to carry a decent amount of stuff. It's got great pockets, but also, also at the same time, it's extremely light. It too is convertible, and I think it's perfect to like take on the go because it's not massive. It's just one of those perfectly sized mini backpacks. Next question, guys, is what kind of extracurricular activities were you in in high school? Band, yearbook. So I really loved this question. I was not in any sort of extracurriculars related to the high school. I did though do things outside of high school. During high school, I was actually in martial arts. So fun fact about me, I am a first degree black belt through the American Taekwondo Association. And so I was heavily involved in that. 
I also for a long time did gymnastics and I actually ended up doing like advanced gymnastics. I had never competed, but I was heavily involved in it and I really, really loved it. To this day on the trampoline, I could still do back tucks and back handsprings. Ask me to do it on the floor though, that is a no-go. So, but I can still do it on the trampoline. Next question. Do you ever want children? I really like this question. I have have gone back and forth with this idea for a very long time. So to keep the answer minimal and short, I did not want children for a very, very long time. I resisted the idea heavily and I was just, it was one of those things where I just was not the female that thought I wanted kids. I have warmed up to the idea much more so in my late 20s, early 30s, mostly because I am now around my friends who have had children and I have gotten to know and love their kids and I've now gotten used to love the idea of having my own children and expanding my family. But that has been a recent, very recent, like within the last couple of years type of development for me. And I am fully in support of women who do not, or humans who don't want children. I think that is perfectly appropriate. Okay, next question is, what bag have you given away or sold but regret doing now? Love this question. One that comes to mind is my Longchamp Le Pliage Cure Bag. I actually did that in the bag sale I had last year and I sold it prior to ever learning what a bag insert was. And my problem with that bag was I felt like it always folded in on itself. And because of the size, I felt like my stuff just sort of got lost in the chaos of it because it just never kept a shape. And so later on though, I had discovered bag inserts. And specifically for Longchamp bags, they're great because they give Longchamp bags a shape. I regret to this day selling it. So yes, my one regret, is the Longchamp Le Pliage cure bag prior to figuring out what a bag insert was. So that for sure. The next question guys, how many bags do you own? Do you Poshmark any tips because I need to do a cleanse on mine on like how to get rid of them? Admittedly, I have never counted the bags that I own ever. I want to say I'm between 40 and 50 bags. Something I do pride myself on is I do purge my closet regularly and the way I do that is I really try to think about am I using this bag? Is it getting the love? Like It gets the love, it just doesn't always get the use and I do find that I really want my bags to be used. So that is something I will definitely take into consideration. And then when I've decided that maybe it's uh, like on the chopping block for me, I like to like leave it out so I can see it, so I can really think like, can I live without it? That is something like, and it takes me a while. Like this isn't just like a day process. This is like multiple like weeks, sometimes months prior to like me getting rid of something. So I would say just take your time, really think about like, is this bag being used? That's like the biggest question for me. And then when it comes time to like, I've made my decision to sell or get rid of the bag, I do one of two things. I do like to Poshmark. I, I've heard good things about Depop, but I've just not really experimented with that yet. So my go-to is Poshmark, I love that. But secondly, I like if my friends and family have ever expressed any interest in the bag, I will give it to them. I prefer to give my bags away to my loved ones um, if they've shown interest in it. But if that's not the case, then Poshmark for sure. And one day I will count all the bags I have and I will present them all in a video for you. So that is one of those questions I thought was really good. And I will absolutely like make a later video on that. So the next question is, do you believe in purse piece? I buy every bag fully anticipating and hoping that with it comes purse piece. However, I've recently decided, and this is kind of a more like in the last several months sort of development that I don't know if the destination is really what I'm here for. I think I have learned and accepted that I am here for the journey. And the journey for me is just trying out and just loving a whole bunch of bags. And I just don't think that purse piece is something that I will ever find. Although I just, I don't, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I think purse piece is for some, purse piece is not for me. I really do enjoy the journey of bags more so than the one destination final ending of the bag of all bags. I've made peace with that I won't have purse piece. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. The next one is, Getting to know you, I'd love to hear what you were like as a kid. Did you always wear fun and bright colors and did you love bags? So as a kid, I was actually very shy 
uh, especially as a younger child and I was not girly at all. I loved to steal my brother's clothes. I was just very much a tomboy. I loved being outside. I loved riding my bike. I loved uh, building things. Like I loved like the idea of building a tree house. I tried to build my own. I, I was not into dolls, but I loved the idea of building myself a doll house. Um, I loved art. I loved to draw, to paint. And I loved like building Legos with my brothers. And I really enjoyed like poetry and reading. I was I was very much, I, I guess you could say, very, a very artsy child. I loved art. In terms of my wardrobe, uh, Funny enough, I was actually a in a private school for from preschool through uh, fifth grade, so you could oftentimes catch me in a yellow polo with navy slacks, and in the fall and the winter I'd wear a plaid jumper. So that is really what I was relegated to in terms of my style. It's definitely you know something that's grown as I've gotten older, and I have become more interested in fashion for sure than I ever was when I was a kid. As for bags, uh, my love for bags started in middle school. It was a trip to TJ Maxx and I went in and out of the bag aisle and I was hooked and the rest is history. Okay, so the next question is, what is your educational background and what do you do for a day job? Is it related to bags? Or maybe it's related to my educational background. So anyway, I don't do anything bags. I graduated with a bachelor's from Purdue University and I fully anticipated or wanted to in college go to law school to become an attorney and in my senior year I decided that I was not going to go straight into law school I was going to take a gap year I actually wanted to work abroad I wanted to work uh, either in Japan or in Europe like somewhere teaching English for a while because I had fallen in love with travel and I'm so happy I ended up taking a gap year because I eventually realized that law school was not for me and being an attorney was not for me, but oddly enough, I do work in a law office. I am a legal assistant, or I'm kind of like a paralegal. Ultimately, I love what I do. I love that I am ultimately in the legal field. I love the people I work with and I have phenomenal bosses. And in terms of my style, because it tends to be very loud, very bold, and very unique, I think my boss largely gets a kick out of it. So that's just sort of where we're at. So I, I, I particularly love the irony of my wardrobe and my working in a law office. I think that's, it's really rich and it's just not lost on me. So yes. Next question. What is your absolute dream bag? Another one that takes a lot of thought and I have like so much more to say on it because, and I think it's its own video. So that to come, but the short answer is at one point it was the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 bandelier bag, particularly in the Damier print. I don't think that that's the case as much anymore. I think my dream would be to design my own. So I would love something that's like medium sized, bold color, convertible with fringe and feet. But I feel like, oh, oh, and functional, but stylish pockets. So that's kind of where my head's at. Next question. Tell us more about your pets. It's my favorite question. So I have two dogs and a ferret. I have one Siberian Husky and one Mutt. He is a German Shepherd and Collie mix. And my ferret is a Dew, so he's a dark-eyed white ferret. So let's start with the Husky. My Husky's name is Apollo. Apollo is adopted. I actually got Apollo from an old like coworker of mine. Uh, whose wife was having problems like medically and they just could not take on the responsibility of the dog So I completely respect that decision and he was offered to me and I gladly took him on Apollo is Hands down the best husky on the freaking planet. He actually uh, gets complimented at the vet too because he's just such a well-behaved husky He is a talker. He loves to talk. He likes to talk back. So I actually get kind of a kick out of that for sure Apollo is going to be six next week. So I've had him since he was three. So I've had him for a little over three years. Apollo's favorite things are napping, talking, digging, which is a new hobby of his. And he also loves Starbucks. He loves everything about Starbucks. He loves the drive to get to Starbucks. 
He loves seeing the building. He actually yelps at it. He gets so excited. And then he loves sticking his head out the window when it comes time to order. He loves displaying how pretty he is because he knows it. He's got those beautiful sky blue eyes and he looks chronically angry, but I swear to you, he's the happiest dog on the planet and he loves the pup cup. Like it's a whole thing. I definitely need to record this for you guys because it's seriously the cutest thing ever. So that, that's Apollo and he's, he's fantastic and he's very much a mama's boy. He loves, loves, loves me, his mom. He loves my fiance too, but I feel like of the two of us, he gravitates far more towards me. Carl is my German Shepherd mix and Carl was also adopted. He was adopted from our vet's office. At the time we were looking for a second dog, DJ wanted a Collie and I wanted a German Shepherd. So lo and behold, we find one that is a mix of the two, best of both worlds in our books. When we met Carl, we put him in this like little playroom and I thought he was wild. I thought he was crazy and I, would, I wanted nothing to do with him. Uh, my fiance on the other hand saw something that in retrospect, looking back, I did not see because Carl has become such a phenomenal dog. And so we ended up taking him home. He was crazy wild and a nut. And it took a lot of like training and a lot of patience. But Carl has become such a, phen a phenomenal dog. He loves humans. He loves attention. He loves to be near you. He loves to be close to you. He's the biggest cuddler. So with that, Carl's favorite things are cuddling. He also loves to play catch. He adores car rides like his brother Apollo and he too loves Starbucks. So just like their mom, they're both Starbucks fiends and they just love it. So yes, uh, Carl's a phenomenal dog, both dogs. I'm very lucky I have both phenomenal dogs. So my last little guy, his name is Nanook. Nanook is a ferret. I used to have three ferrets. Unfortunately, the two passed away, so I only have Nan. Nan is from a pet store. I got him about five and a half years ago when he was a baby, and I actually got him on discount because the manager of the pet store said that he had been there for months, and no one wanted him because he was a bigger ferret. And I had to have him after I found out that nobody wanted him because I just thought that was the saddest thing. And so I took him home and Nan has become one of the best ferrets ever. He is a very good like introductory ferret. If, for example, like if I have friends coming over who have never dealt with ferrets, I like to introduce them to Nan because Nan is just so calm. He's so chill and he's just perfect for that. And he's so sweet and he's just, he's, he's fantastic. Nan loves to sleep. Nan loves to scurry around the basement and come up and find different nooks and crannies. And Nan also loves to climb into hampers and fall asleep there. Nan loves food, he loves to eat, and yeah, he just loves to chill and he loves giving kisses. As you saw in my house tour video, Nan is a big lover. So yes, he's just, he's such a phenomenal little guy. So yes, I'm gonna make a whole video on my pets. Like I really just wanna dedicate an entire video to them because they're, they're just, I love my pets so much. So anyway, moving on to the next question. So the next question is, I would like to know what it is about a leather bag that attracts you. Were you always interested in handbags and have you found purse piece? Some people love shoes. Why do you enjoy a new handbag? So I think this is such a good question and again one of those ones that I feel like deserves more of a video. I don't know specifically what about a leather bag attracts me. A lot of things do. Uh, sometimes I love the design of it. Sometimes I love the idea of how it will function for me. Sometimes I love the material it's made out of, the brand that designs it. There's just so many different factors for me that play into the leather bags that I have. But one of the greatest things I think about a leather bag is just the, the smell. It's like intoxicating for me. Like. I just, I love it. It's like one of my favorite things about getting any kind of new leather bag. So it's definitely, that's like one of the things that like immediately like is pronounced to me is the smell for sure. So I love it for that reason. Were you always interested in handbags? So not always, it came out of like middle school. So I was around 11 when I really started to love purses. I'm 30 now for reference. So it's a good 19 year hobby for sure. And I've loved them for 19 years it, in depth I studying them carrying them I've loved everything about bags and yeah so it's been a long long time hobby and uh, so some people love shoes why do you enjoy a new handbag this is also a really good question and something I've never really considered why because you're right everybody I feel like has their thing I, I don't know if it's just the fact that I feel like a handbag do 
everything for an outfit. A handbag can make the outfit. I have walked out in a sweatshirt and jeans but had the coolest bag and everybody was like, your bag is so cool. And I just love that. I love what they can do for the look. I love how they function. I love the idea of carrying my stuff with me. And yeah, I just, I, I love everything about them. I just, I love that they are such a definition of your personality without actually like putting words on your body to define yourself. I just think that they are such an outward expression of our innermost self. And I feel like a bag says a lot about a person. So that to me is something that I just love so much about bags is that they are just an expression of you. And that that has been something that I really kept in mind for as long as I can remember of, and, and what I've carried. So yes, uh, but I loved this question and I fully anticipate making a bigger video about it. Okay, so the next question is with all of your bags, which one would you use as a carry-on and why? So I think the best carry-on bag I own is most definitely my Urban Southern Legacy Tote, and I think of that bag for several reasons. So fun fact about me is I actually buy a lot of bags with an airport function in mind. Like how does this bag function in an airport? Will it do what it needs to do very quickly, very efficiently? And I think the Urban Southern Legacy Tote is that for many reasons and I'll explain to you why. First and foremost, it is a convertible tote. So you can wear it as a handle, you can wear a cross body, shoulder bag, backpack, it does all of the things. So I think that first and foremost is one of the best reasons why it would be perfect for the airport. Second is that it's got that front compartment that's zippered so it is secure when you want it to be but it's easy access when you need it to be. So I think that that pocket's perfect for your license, for your boarding pass, for your passport, like all of those documents and necessary things that you need right away but not necessarily all the time in the airport, that's perfect for that reason. The next thing I like about it is that it holds a good amount of stuff on the inner compartment. So I'm able to hold my 15 inch laptop, I could hold my DSLR camera, like all of those things I would not necessarily be comfortable with putting in my overhead compartment bag or maybe my check-in bag, like it would be perfect for that reason and I just, I think it would be the quintessential perfect airport bag and I actually got it within the last year so with everything going around on the pandemic I've unfortunately not been able to test the theory on the airport but with hopefully in time I'm able to test the theory and I can make another video on all about how I carried it into the airport with me but yes long story short that bag for sure. So the next question is, when and or how did you join the handbag addiction? So again, I feel like I've touched on this for sure, but it was a perusal down a TJ Maxx aisle. It started with a Tommy Hilfiger mini backpack and the rest is history. The next bag I got after that was a Nine West like black and white bag, kind of like an old vintage Balenciaga kind of look. I don't know, I was just hooked. I loved it. I loved what, I just loved the colors. I loved the expressions. I loved carrying my stuff on me. I just like, I, yeah, I don't know. There was so much about them that I absolutely loved. Like, and it just, it was, it was like a trigger moment for me. And I have loved bags ever since. The next question is how many siblings do you have? So I loved this question. I am one of four. I'm actually the oldest. I am 30. I have then two brothers and a sister. My one brother is 27. The Next is 23, and then my little sister, who is the youngest of the family, is 22. So yes, the oldest of four. The next question is, and this was so hard, but is what is your absolute hands down favorite bag or purse? So my hands down favorite bag is the Coach Medium Legacy Tote. And I bought this bag for myself when I was in college. I think what made it my favorite bag was, I just think it was so functional, and it was just perfect size. I think all around, but it was my gift to myself for graduation. And I, I bought it like the beginning of my senior year. And I, like, obviously I knew this was like my first big girl bag. It was the bag I'd carry into work interviews and things like that. And it was a big purchase for me. I think at the time I had like a coupon when I bought it. So I paid like $240 for it, which is no like laughing matter, especially for a college student. It was expensive then. I worked for Target, like at Target. So I didn't make a lot of money, but like I had saved up, I found the coupon and it was just like, it was such a big deal purchase for me. And I carried that bag for about a year and a half consistently. 
money and I loved it. I, it. I took it to Europe with me. I took it so many places and actually the bag gave up on me before I gave up on it. It actually broke. It was so depressing. But yes, I adored that bag. I actually sent it into Coach to get fixed and unfortunately they weren't able to fix it. So they sent me a gift card and kept the bag. So I got a gift card. I ended up buying another coach bag but they had stopped making the legacy line and I just I never really found a bag that like did it for me quite like that and again I don't know so much if it was the bag or just the significance and the meaning behind it that really just did it for me but that was my all-time favorite bag and it was the most meaningful one ever so yes the coach legacy tote in the size medium Next question, what are your top three favorite handbags in your collection right now? So I really loved this question and I, I got a lot of questions on like what are your top five favorite bags ever, what are your top three, what are your top five? So I'm just going to give you the top five favorite bags now and then later on I'll tell you my top five favorite bags ever. So like these are like what's in my collection now. So my first and foremost one is my Urban Southern Legacy Tote. My next one is my Urban Southern Belt Bag. The next one is my Rebecca Minkoff Jet Boxy Crossbody. Uh, I love my Kurt Geiger Rainbow XXL Kensington bag. And my last one is my Rebecca Minkoff Mini Julian backpack. Like those are my top five current favorites sitting in my collection as we speak. Such a great question. I will absolutely be doing an entire video on like my favorite bags, my whole bag collection, like the whole nine. So definitely know that that's to come. Next question, y'all. I'm new to you, but what do you look for when deciding to purchase a bag? Well, welcome. I really appreciate you being here. So, you know, honestly, like what I look for when it comes to purchasing a bag, it, it can vary so much. You know, sometimes it's, it's what, how does the bag function? Like for example, when I ordered my Urban Southern Legacy tote for me, that was such a, it was a matter of function it was how will it function as kind of a work bag you know it just depends like sometimes I really want a bag with a cool shape sometimes I want a bag with a cool color sometimes I want a bag with great function like and how it will function for me so it really honestly is just a variable and it always is just it changes all the time I have a lot of different kinds of bags and so it definitely it's it's a variable for sure but I thought that was such a great question and definitely something I want to create a bigger you know more in-depth video on okay so so the next question is, how do you stop yourself from buying every cute bag you see on social media? The struggle for me is real. Girl, the struggle for me is so real too. I seriously want to buy every bag I see all the time. Um, but honestly, the way I keep myself from purchasing everything is I like to create like a wish list for myself, whether it be on my phone, whether it be in a notebook or something. And what I like to do is I like to write it down, especially bags with higher price points. And I like to think about it for a week, sometimes two, three weeks. And I feel like if I continue thinking about it and I can't let that bag go, that's when I know I really want it. So that's really kind of my thought process. Now, obviously, I have my impulse bias, don't get me wrong, but I have gotten much better in terms of reining in my purchases and really trying to think about the bag for a while. And if it's something I can't seem to let go and I'm constantly thinking about it, chances are I really want that bag. So that that is my recommendation is definitely write it down somewhere in your phone on a notebook and if you like let it go and you stop thinking about it you didn't really want it anyway but if you can't let that bag go you want it okay so the next question is what are your top five favorite bags so this i considered like my top five favorite bag like i've ever had so they are my coach legacy tote my betsy johnson rotary foam bag my rebecca minkoff jet boxy crossbody my kurt geiger rainbow xxl kensington bag and then the fifth is such a toss-up guys it is between my urban southern legacy tote and my urban southern belt bag like between the two i don't even know which i love more because they both have a separate function and they work very very differently but i love both so much it's it's like my top favorite six okay i can't do five I can do six <laughs> so it, it's those but again I definitely want to do a more in-depth review I, I loved this question and it, it took so long to answer this was a hard one for me but definitely those bags the next question is how often do you switch out your bags do you use a new purse every day depending on your outfit do you usually carry a purse in addition to a work bag 
or do you use it as your purse when you're working? So how often do you switch out your bag? It honestly just depends. Lately, I've been switching it out every day, every other day. Um, I actually kind of made a whole video on this. I will link that down below. I tend to just like, sometimes it's to match my outfit. Sometimes it's for function. Sometimes it's just I really want to carry it. It really all depends. Like I have some methods to my madness, but for the most part, it's just a personal choice. And again, like right now, I'm just switching it out every day. I'm using all sorts of bags, but is that always typical? Sometimes I carry a bag, the same bag for a couple weeks. Like it honestly all depends on my mood, the bag, the whole nine. And the next one is, so do you usually carry a purse in addition to your work bag? Yes, I do. So my work bag right now, I have been tr tr like testing out different work bags that I have been given and sent. So, but my typical work bag is my Urban Southern Legacy tote bag and I love that. However, I do carry a purse in addition to my work bag, but I think because I carry my work bag and I've really started to rely on my work bag that I am able to kind of shrink my bags a little bit, which is maybe why I've gone and gravitated into more small bags, simply because I'm able to put a lot of the items that I felt like I needed in my bag in my work bag, and I carry less in my functioning like handbag purse. But yes, I do carry the two. I don't generally use my work bag as my purse to, throughout the week. I oftentimes have both, so that's how that works. And I do love a good bag exception. I love when I can carry in my purse inside my work bag and then like take my purse with me when I go out or whatever. So that's generally, generally what I do. So the next question is, if you had a bag that only got, only fit five items, what would they be? Great question. And I think I've really had a lot of experience lately with this because I've carried such small bags. So my five items that I would carry would be, first and foremost, my wallet. I generally carry a very slim card wallet, so it just goes into like all small bags. My second one is the Dr. Dan's Cordobalm Lip Balm. I've talked about this extensively. It's my favorite lip product. My number three would be some sort of like lotion for my skin. I have eczema, so I'm always carrying some sort of lotion. So whether that be like Vaseline or Aquaphor, it's something uh, to hydrate my skin. And then the fourth item would be tweezers for obvious reasons. And the last item would be sunscreen because I'm a big sunscreen fan. So those five for sure. Next one is how did you meet your significant other? another favorite topic for me to talk about and I could talk about it for hours. I actually did an entire video on this so I will link that down below in case you want to watch the entire thing but a very quick answer is Facebook. Uh, I feel like a very millennial answer. He slid into my DMs if you will in January of 2014 and we started dating in August of that year and the rest is history. So the next question is if you could only carry one bag for the rest of your life, what would it be? All right, guys, <laughs> this is such a hard question. So I, I really thought about the bags I have now, and I feel like of all the bags, if I had to carry one of my bags for the rest of my life, I think I would carry my Rebecca Minkoff Jet Boxy Crossbody, and here is why. I have come to really adore that bag more so than I ever thought. It was very hesitant. Uh, when I first saw it because I didn't think I'd like the size, but my girlfriend surprised me with it for my 30th birthday. And I think the size is phenomenal. It's the best size. It's not too small. It's not too large. It's that perfect medium size bag. It has compartments on it that I think are not only lending to the overall cool look of the bag, but simultaneously are very functional. So I think the compartments make it so that you no longer have to use like pouches and things like that. So I love that about that. And there's so many, I think there's like four or five functional pockets on that bag. I love that it's a crossbody, and I love that there's a top handle. I also think that the color of the bag I have is very cool. It's like a, like a suede teal. So I love that with gunmetal hard, hardware. And I love the fact that the bag has feet. So I just feel like everything about that bag has been really thought through in terms of its function, but simultaneously, it's just, it's a beautiful bag. It's a head turner. It's so cute. And I think if I had to carry one in my collection for the rest of my life, I think it would absolutely be the Rebecca Minkoff Jet Boxy Crossbody. But I hope I'd never have to carry one bag for the rest of my life because I just, I love variety. I think it's the spice of life. But if given, if I had to make a choice, it would be that one for sure. So the next question is, what line of work are you in? So I think I already answered this. I am in the legal field. I am a legal assistant 
think of like a paralegal for attorneys. I work in the medical malpractice defense field and I have been doing that job for about seven years and I love the legal field. So it's, it's definitely something I love a lot and I'm very, very pleased with what I do. So yeah, I am the legal assistant. Okay, so the next question is, how do you decide what bag to add to your collection? Color, style, size, or do you just see one in passing and fall in love? Also, can you do an updated bag collection video? First and foremost, yes, I will absolutely do an updated bag collection video. I think these questions have so stemmed like the need for that. Um, also, in terms of like how I think about it, so some again, I feel like I've touched on this. I, I sometimes think about um, maybe I need a certain function, maybe I want a certain color, maybe I just want something super bold. It really honestly depends. A lot of the times I kind of like, you know, either you guys give me really great suggestions or maybe I find one like, on Facebook or through Instagram that it's like an ad. I sometimes, I love to watch like what's in my bag reviews on YouTube and like sometimes I'm so inspired by those bags. I then go ahead and put those on a wish list. If I still feel like I'm thinking about it, then I will go ahead and get them. But it really does vary in terms of like what is my next bag. Like I don't really have a particular thought process. Like sometimes I really do want something for a specific function, but generally it's just whatever has caught my eye and I can't stop thinking about it. So that's that's generally generally my thought process as I purchase new bags. Okay, so the next question is if you could make a perfect bag, what would it be? I originally thought that the perfect bag for me would be a Louis Vuitton Speedy 30, the bandolier with the Damier print. But I feel like if I had to manufacture my perfect bag, which I hope to do one day, it would definitely be a medium size. It would be some sort of convertible with fringe, bold color, and feet. I feel like I already talked about this. I feel like I've talked a lot, so forgive me if I've repeated myself, but for sure something bold, fringe, feet, like the whole nine, like definitely something with that. Oh, and very functional pockets that lend to the look. So the next one, how did you get all your fur babies? I feel like I addressed that. My Both my dogs are adopted and I actually got Nan at a pet store but discounted because no one wanted him. So quick and short of that, I will do a whole video on my fur babies because they're just so cute and I can't get enough of them. So that will definitely be in the line of videos to come. But the next one is what are your top three bags? I feel like I've answered that. So you, you know that. The next one is uh, do you stock your larger bags? Yes, I do. I actually tend to try and keep like the tissue that my larger bags come with and I will keep that to stuff them later on. If I don't have tissue, I will sometimes use like clothes that I no longer wear like I would have otherwise given away. I keep it for bags to stuff them um, just to keep their shape. So yes, I do stuff uh, some of my larger bags for sure. Next question is, what bag would you choose for a beach vacay? Would you take one bag or two? one for the beach and one for going out and about uh doesn't have to be brand specific hi y'all editing erica here so i feel like i heard this question after the fact and as i was editing realized i answered it completely wrong so here's my answer yes i would take two bags on a beach vacation i would take one sort of like cooler backpack to the beach and cooler backpack meaning like an actual like cooler that functions as a backpack. I have one from Target that I love and I have taken it to the beach mul multiple times. As for going out for the beach vacation, yes, I would then take like probably a separate smaller bag, maybe my PLG mini crossbody tote. I tend to gravitate towards that quite a bit or potentially like my Rebecca Minkoff Jet Boxy crossbody. That's another one I'd go for or the Urban Southern Half Moon belt bag that would absolutely also be another option for like a beach vacay. So yeah, something for the beach and then something smaller, more just totable to just kind of waltz around the, you know, the town. So the next one is, what is your favorite out for the day bag that you have in your collection and why? So honestly, my favorite out for the day, out and about running errands or going in and out of places would definitely be my Urban Southern Half Moon belt bag. I have come to love this bag so, so, so much. I think it's one of the most functional bags I've ever carried in my entire life. It's perfect. I think it's better than a crossbody bag in terms of its function because it like rests right here and it's so easily accessible and you literally forget you're wearing it. So 1000% would be my go-to bag for a day out on the town or just a day like out shopping or whatever. 
that that's the one okay so the next one is what is your favorite destination you've traveled to and why so my favorite destination i've ever gone to was germany Fun fact, um, I am actually second generation American on my mom's side. My mom was born in the US, but at the age of one, went and like moved back to Germany with her big family. And her first language was not English, it was German. No, I do not speak German, unfortunately. My mom never taught me. However, um, I have a lot of family still in Germany, like we're relatively new to this country on that side. So a lot of them, you know, I hadn't seen in so long. So that was such a cool opportunity to go see them and visit them. And simultaneously, I actually spent the summer abroad in Germany studying uh, at the university. I studied at the University of Marburg there and it was one of the best experiences of my entire life. I loved it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I was so grateful to get that opportunity and yeah, I think about it all the time. It's like one of my best experiences and just, oh, I loved it. I can't wait to go back. It's been a place I've wanted to go back to for a long time. And obviously 2020 put a huge pit in um, travel plans, but that is definitely something that I would love to do very soon is to go back to Germany. But best trip of my lifetime, hands down for sure. So the next one is, I would be interested to hear about your dream bag. Designed, spare no expense, designer custom piece. So I feel like I've touched on this, definitely the Speedy 30 at one point, but I think now more so than ever, one of my own choosing, and I feel like we've gone over the details, but it's such a good question, and I would love to make a video about that. Okay, so the next question is, how much time do you put into your videos on a weekly basis? What are your favorite and least favorite things about this platform? Such a phenomenal question. It tends to vary. I would say on average about 10 to 15 hours per week on my video, and that's like brain dumping ideas, it is outlining the videos, it is filming and it is editing the videos and I do two a week so I come out with one on Thursday and one on Sunday and also part of it is finding Wi-Fi because I have awful awful internet here at my house so that's all part of like you know part of the video creating process. My least favorite thing about the YouTube platform is obviously like you have your keyboard warriors who are rude and mean and they leave awful comments sometimes. I haven't really had that so much on this channel, but I had a previous channel on YouTube and people could be very unkind. So uh, you definitely have people who hide behind, you know, their keyboards for sure and they just can ruin your entire day. But on this channel, I feel like I found like my favorite thing on this platform, which is I found such amazing, kind people that I really just absolutely love having conversations with. I love sharing my hobby with you guys. And I love sharing my hobbies, plural. I feel like I've been able to really expand this content. And I feel like I'm sharing more and more of like my life and what I love with you guys. And that is something I've really loved to do. I just think it's been so fun to sort of create this community and have all of you to talk to and have all of you to share one of my favorite things which is the handbag and uh, really largely all of my favorite things so yeah definitely favorite thing would be that I have met such a fantastic community with this channel and I'm able to share all of the things I love with you guys and that's literally one of my favorite things to do so thank you for this opportunity and yeah thank you for letting me be a part of your life I think that's uh, it's such a surreal and very cool thing for me for sure next question is if you were forced to carry the same bag for a year, yes a year, which one would you choose and why? Right now, I would definitely say the Rebecca Minkoff Jet Boxy Crossbody for reasons I've already talked about. I just think it's a really, really phenomenal bag. So if, if given the choice, if I had to choose, it would be that one. Okay, so the next one is if you could purchase bags from one brand for the rest of your life, what brand would that be and why? Bonus question, what bag started your love for handbags and do you still have it? Okay, so very difficult question. Um, so there was a point in my life I was very much a coach girl, loved coach handbags. I have definitely, I still will buy from coach sometimes, but nowhere near like I used to. I don't feel like I have a particularly favorite brand of bags. Um, however, I feel like if I had to choose one brand for the rest of my life, it would absolutely be Urban Southern for many reasons. One, I love their bags. I think they're phenomenal. I love the designs. I think they're minimal, but very eye-catching too, which I have talked about is a very difficult thing to do in my opinion. I think it's hard to have both. Simultaneously, I love just the entire experience with Urban Southern. I think they're phenomenal to work with. They answer all my questions. They will make tweaks to bags, which I don't know any other designer that would do that. So Urban Southern, hands down, because they're just I love working with them. They're great. So yes, absolutely, Urban Southern. The bonus question though is 
uh, what bag started your love for handbags and do you still have it? It was a Tommy Hilfiger mini backpack that was red and blue and white with a drawstring. No, unfortunately, I do not have it. I, you know, I may have it somewhere at my parents' house, but not with me, unfortunately. But that was the bag. That was the domino effect of them all was that one. Loved it. The next question, we're getting to the end, guys. So the next one is, do you treat your Urban Southern bags with any products? I have not yet, but I plan to. And the way I will like treat them is with the Urban Southern leather butter that they sell. I think any bags that I treat, I tend to gravitate towards the leather that the brand, the leather products that the brand sells for those bags specifically. So yeah, maybe that's a little overkill, like to have that much leather cleaner. But I don't know why. I just feel like I prefer to use it from the brand of the bag. But yes, eventually I will absolutely treat my Urban Southern bags. So the next question is, what is your favorite leather tote? Um, absolutely for sure. My Urban Southern Legacy tote, I love it for the fact that it's multifunctional in the sense that it is completely like convertible, whether it be a top handle bag, a crossbody, a shoulder bag, a backpack. I think it's great. I love the pockets on the inside. I love the pockets on the outside. And I just think it's a perfect functional workhouse tote. And I have it in the chestnut. I love the black. I'm trying to justify why I need both colors, but I just, I love it. It's one of my all time favorite leather totes, hands down. So the next one is, what's the next bag on your wish list? Okay, so I have a couple. I either want the mini Avery bag from Go Forth Goods in the crushed grape color, which is part of their limited edition color. And then um, possibly the Moon Age dream bag from Life on Mars Goods. It is phenomenal, it's so pretty. So one of those two, for sure. So the next one is, what's your favorite movie? Hands down, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Love it, I think it's such a fun movie. I have watched that movie so many times, I've memorized the every line, including the Greek. Onikos ehi anagatsiki. If you had the day all to yourself and you could do anything, money not an issue, what would you do? Oh God, such a phenomenal question. So if I had the day all to myself and money was no object, okay, I would likely get up at like 10 because I don't, I'm not a morning person. I would then love to go shopping. Um. If money were no object, I would love to visit like a Louis Vuitton, don't get me wrong. Like I just, I've never like gone luxury shopping, so I'd love to go do that. That would be a thing. But I also like just love going to like different stores and just discovering like new things. So I would definitely try and like map out like different destinations I have never been, whether those be like individual like crafty stores and they're kind of like on their own, independent, whether those these those be luxury stores so that's for sure I'm also a huge foodie guys I don't know if you've like you know this about me I love trying new food I tend to love all the food I try so I love an array of different dishes so I would absolutely love to go like to a different restaurant like maybe somewhere downtown like Chicago's got such great restaurants so yeah it would just be a day of shopping at like all kinds of different stores preferably things I've never been to and I'd love to like target just different like restaurants too that I've never tried um there's just so many downtown there's so many in, in Chicago there's a ton um so definitely something like that I I don't know that I don't, that's a really good question it's a solid question but definitely involving shopping definitely a stop into one of the luxury stores and for sure a big roadmap full of food and the next one is what products do you use in your hair I know you love all sorts of skincare, so wondering what shampoos, conditioning, conditioners, and styling products you use. So I really love this question, and I want to make it an entire video. I think I had said that in a different video. Uh, I'm pretty like low maintenance with my hair. The two, like, so I am loving Revlon's Extreme Length Shampoo and Conditioner. I use the set. I also use a um, like a platinum blonde shampoo, like a purple shampoo that is by the brand. I wrote it down. It is by the brand Cebu S. No, excuse me, C I B U. And I do not wash my hair all the time. I wash it maybe twice a week. So when I do wash it, I wash it twice. I start off with the dry shampoo or the purple shampoo, and I will leave that in for four minutes, and then I wash it out with the Extreme Length uh, Redken shampoo. 
In terms of my styling products, like tools, I use a straightener. I love the Revlon blowout brush, although I don't use that very often. And if I want the waves in my hair, I use a one inch curling iron to create those. In terms of like any styling products, I, I just don't really use them. I'm looking for a heat protectant. I have one, but I don't really love it. I feel like it makes my hair look and feel weighted down. I do have very thin hair, so I have to be careful what kind of products I use. So I do have one, but I don't really love it. And the only other product I use really is a dry shampoo. I like Aveda dry shampoo. I like Batiste, and I've recently introduced myself to Biomatrix dry shampoo. Loving that. That's a really good one too. Um, I don't really use like hairsprays or anything like every once in a while, but usually like a Tresemme, but I have very lucky, I'm very lucky in the sense that my hair holds the style, whether that be waves, curls, whatever it is, it, I don't need hairspray, it will hold. I loved this question, thank you so much for asking it. Okay, so the next question is, how do you display or store all your bags? Great question, and also in the process, I am actually going to get a shelf from Ikea to store all my bags in my office and sort of display them all at the same time. For now, the bags that I use all the time are sadly sitting on my office floor, so I kind of just go in and out very easily. Other bags that I don't use very often, I either store on the shelf of my closet stuffed in, in dust bags and or I have stuffed them, put them in dust bags and put them in like um, like water sealed or not water sealed, but like waterproof like packing totes is generally what I'll do with them. So next question is, have you found a dupe or dust bag that will hold bags totes? So I generally keep all of my dust bags that I've ever gotten and I will reuse them. And so I have a lot of dust bags, so most of my bags are stored like that. However, for bags that I don't have a dust bag for, I will I will actually use pillowcases sometimes. I don't know if that's the best idea for them, uh, but pillowcases for sure. I think, I feel like if you want a good dust bag and you're like looking to buy them, I'm sure Amazon would be a perfect place to look for a dust bag. So that would be my advice is to check on Amazon. So next question is, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? So my current wish list, travel wish list, if you will, is I either want to go to Dublin, Ireland, or I would like to go see, like go on an Alaskan cruise. I have always wanted to go to Alaska. So one of those two things is on my wish list right now. The next question is, what is your most favorite color in a bag? I love bold colors. I have a rainbow bag that's like one of my favorites for the fact that it is rainbow. I love like hot pink. I gravitate towards all that. But I feel like some of my favorite colors, oddly enough, I gravitate largely towards black bags. And I really love like a mustard yellow bag. Like one of those two, if I had to pick, would probably be my most bought bag for sure. But I do appreciate a very good bold color bag even a rainbow. I love, I love bold colors, but uh, I think the bag color I have the most of is definitely black. So what a, what a conundrum. <laughs> but anyway, next question. Does purse piece exist? Um, okay. I feel like I've touched on this and I, again, I want to do a whole video on it. I think for some people purse piece exists. For me, it does not. I have just really come to appreciate the journey of the bag versus maybe the destination. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. I really just, for me, purse piece is not a thing. Maybe it will someday, right now, in the near future, not at all. So no, for me, purse piece does not exist. I think for any handbag lover, I don't think purse piece really ever exists, ever. So the next final question, do you keep all your bags and what do you do when you're done with them? Like resell, donate, etc. How many is too many? Okay, so I don't think there's a, ever such a thing as too many bags. It just that doesn't exist in my book. So however many you have, good for you. Uh, the next one is, do you keep all your bags? No, I don't keep all my bags. I, I, I do pride myself on getting rid of bags when I'm done with them or I just don't use them anymore. And I either Poshmark them or I give them to friends and family. All right, y'all, that was all the questions. They were so good. And I thought so much about making this two part video, but I didn't want to. So I'm gonna just apologize for how lengthy this video is. I definitely did not anticipate it being this long. I tried to be as quick as possible, but they were just such good questions. And I felt like some, you know, like all of them, I just really wanted to go in depth, but I couldn't. So I definitely will absolutely make a, more videos like this. And I will touch on a lot of the topics, specifically like my top favorite bags 
uh, how many bags my collection um, and purse piece I think that was like such a such a good themed question but anyway so I will definitely definitely create those videos going forward so not to worry I will make those and again I apologize for the length but now what you're really here for who won the giveaway so I actually went ahead and put all the names in like a name generator I went ahead and like did a random so the person who won the giveaway is Taylor's handbags so Taylor congratulations I will leave my email in the description box down below please get in touch with me let me know which bag you want in what color and I will go ahead and order that for you on Urban Southern again though guys for anybody who is looking to buy an Urban Southern bag maybe start your collection or add to it uh, definitely definitely check all of their bags out check out these new ones I have the discount of in pursuit 10 that will also be in the description box down below but again thank you everybody for your participation in this giveaway such amazing questions I sincerely loved every single one I just I, I believe I touched on every single question and I just I had so much fun they were very thought-provoking questions and definitely definitely good in-depth get to know me videos so I will wrap it up now. I cannot wait to see you in Sunday's video. But that all being said, though, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your week, a fantastic weekend, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye, guys!